All right, then. Uh, it was at the villa, of course, will allow you also to uh, take a look at uh, what is said today after it was unveiled. Take a listen to it. I thank the oh, Almighty Allah for the opportunity and the President of the Federal Republic for giving me this opportunity to serve him and, of course, uh, the country. So what will Nigerians expect from you as well? Well, I have not started. So I'll find out and let the... I, I don't report directly to the, to the nation, I report to the President. So and what I serve him. Expect from you as well? What can you assure him? I think you have to ask the President. <laughs> <laughs> I think he demands loyalty, competence and support. So what will be your guiding principles as two of staff? To serve the president to the best of my ability. Nigeria Thank you. So you heard him there. So he's a man that we'll be talking to about tonight and the task before him. Let, let's get started with the conversation. Have a, a professor of a political science, he's a publisher and a columnist, Professor Gideon Fouadibe. Thank you so much, Professor, for joining us tonight. Uh, let's begin by looking at the man, Professor Ibrahim Gambari. Uh, from what you know about him, what is your immediate assessment? Well, thank you very much. Uh, obviously, he's one of the most credentialed Nigerians. Uh, he was the external affairs minister under Buhari between 84 and 85. He's been under secretary in the UN, president of UNICEF, highly respected within the academia. So he has a lot of, he comes to the job with social capital, good social capital. In fact, there are so many, a number of people who feel actually that the position of chief of staff is rather a downgrade for him because he's very, very well credentialed. Uh, Pr President Muhammadu Buhari is no stranger to him. He's worked with him in about 30, over 30 years ago now. Uh, now he's back working with him, perhaps more uh, closer than uh, he did in, uh, in over 30 years ago. But the kind of relationship that you find between the chief of staff and the president, what do you expect between the 75-year-old Professor Gambari and President Muhammad Buhari? Uh, first of all, let me say that when you are given an appointment, uh, he was appointed as chief of staff, yet he will be 76 in November. But uh, he was not appointed to do a sprint. It's more to do an intellectual work. If you look at the U.S., for example, you see Donald Trump will be 74. You will see that uh, Bernie Sanders, who nearly became the Democratic uh, flag bearer, uh, will be 79 in September. And uh, the presumptive Democratic nominee um, himself, uh, Joe Biden, will be 78 in November. So... While age is important, it's not the overriding thing we should be focusing on at this stage. Um, having said this, even though he's extremely well credentialed, uh, he has worked essentially in highly structured environments. This will be something totally different. Uh, somebody described the position of chief of staff as that of uh, blocking and tackling. So it's actually... A, Poison chalice, so to say, is completely going to be different. And how effective you will be on that job, he can, nobody will know at now. One, it will depend on whether the locus of power will still remain with that office. In other words, it is possible that Buhari will decide to move the locus, the substance of that power elsewhere. Remember, for example, under Obasanjo, uh, it was a common, quote-unquote, common domestic assistant, and Uba and a few others, uh, the economic team. They were the ones that were the gatekeepers to the president, to President Obasanjo. And uh, Yaradwa himself didn't even have a, a chief of staff. So if the locus of power is the power remains without office, it will again depend on what we call friction. There are other contending power centers. The interaction between them, what he wants to do and their resistance, and whether he co-ops them or, one, or wants to neutralize them. That will all depend on uh, determining how effective he becomes. So you can come with any blueprint. You're just like any boxer. You can come with all the best strategy on how you are going to knock down your opponent. It is only when the first punch lands on your chin that you know whether your strategies are still going to, you're even going to remember your strategy. So things are going to be different. Uh, things are going to be different from um, 
um, the how celebrated he was in the academia, how he has distinguished himself in the diplomatic circles, because this is a totally different ball game. He is now going to take a position of, so to say, being as one of the biographers put it, the, the president's son of a bitch. <laughs> Indeed. Uh, so it, let's look at Professor Gambari, his capacity. This is not the first time it will be uh, in the federal executive uh, uh, cabinet, in the cabinet. Uh, so he's going to come, he's going to be part of the cabinet at this time and also a gatekeeper to the president. Look at him and his experience. What do you think, uh, what do you make of his experience and his knowledge and how uh, that will play out, especially at this very critical time. No, he comes with good social capital. He's extremely well respected and well regarded. But as I said, it depends one on whether how well he functions or how it depends one on the legroom he's allowed by the president. It also depends on, because from what we saw in the tributes paid to Abakiri, uh, many of us have started to think that perhaps he was not even as powerful as many people thought. So what el el legroom were you given? How do you relate with other contending centers of power? Just because he's now the chief of staff does not mean that other con power contenders will disappear. There will always be contenders. And whether he's able to reach accommodation with them very easily or neutralize them as the case will be, will largely determine how effective. It also determines on whether the president will continue, continues to uh, have implicit trust in him. In terms of capacity, there's nobody who doubts his capacity. But as you know, uh, it's just not enough. You have Nigerian factor, that is the environmental factors. You have the issue of friction, what happens when you get into the system and you have to deal with people who resist you. So there are so many imponderables. So at this stage, it's better we call it a fog of war, what we don't know. There are things you never will know, the intervening variables until he starts. And then you have to even give him a few months um, to be able to you know, find his bearing because it's a completely new challenge. Let's bring in uh, Professor Muhammad uh, Laden, uh, who is the DG of the Nigerian Institute of Advanced Legal Studies. He joins us from Abuja. Thank you so much, Professor, for coming on tonight. Let me get your own take on the appointment of um, uh, Professor Ibrahim uh, Gambari as the new chief of staff. Good evening. Thank you very much for having me on the program. Uh, I think in the first instance, uh, from the CV of uh, Professor Ibrahim Gambari that was uh, viral uh, in the last 24 hours, uh, and also uh, from my personal contact with him in the last, you know, uh, 15, 20 years, uh, I can clearly say that uh, it's actually a well-deserved appointment uh, because of his pedigree uh, in terms of qualifications, competence, skills, experience, exposure, uh, you know, at both national, you know, regional, continental, and uh, global level. Uh, and I think it's aggregate of uh, experience uh, and exposure in the last actually 25, 30 years uh, testifies actually to his actually capacity to handle this kind of a job uh, of essentially what is known in the American system as the gatekeeper. So uh, it is true that uh, uh, he has served actually uh, in various capacities because first I knew him actually when he left Amitabha University's area you know, he served as the DG of the Nigerian Institute of International Affairs uh, before he became the Minister of External Affairs or Minister of Foreign Affairs. And then he catapulted into the UN system uh, in the last, actually, 20 years uh, or so. So I think in terms of competence, skills, exposure, experience, uh, he's a very good choice. And he's also very well known, uh, you know, to President Buhari. Uh, and it's also about somebody who can actually get keep uh, the presidency. Let's take a break now. When we come back, we look critically more uh, on the person of uh, uh, Professor Ibrahim Gambari, the office of the chief of staff, and the analysis and the task before 
the new man in the new role. Join us again, everyone. Thank you so much, everyone, for staying with us. Let's get back uh, to our conversation on the new Chief of Staff to President Muhammad Buhari, who was uh, announced today, Professor Ibrahim Gambari, and uh, the, the task before him. My guest tonight on the program, Professor Muhammad Laden, is uh, the Director General of uh, the Institute of Advanced Legal Studies. He's been uh, Skyping with us from Abuja, and also we have a Professor of Political Science at the uh, Nasara State University, a publisher and a columnist, Professor uh, Adibe. Thank you so much, Professor Julia, for Adibe for coming on tonight. Let me get back to Professor uh, Laden. Uh, if you look at the person of, uh, before we come to the role, look at, the, there's been some uh, people who love him and some who are not quite happy about uh, uh, the appointment of uh, Professor Gambari. What can you say about this? Uh, well, in the first instance, we need to understand that the choice of a personal aide to the president to be the gatekeeper, you know, uh, of the presidency to the president is a personal choice of Mr. President, even though the office itself is not necessarily in the constitution of Nigeria. So whether people like it or not, you know, or whether people celebrate actually over this appointment or not, I think we need to look at, first and foremost, three things. First, who is Professor Ibrahim Gambari? If you look at his pedigree and the CV that went viral in the last 24 hours, it is very clear that if you are looking for someone who can add value to get keeping the presidency, then from his qualifications, his competences, his skills, his exposure, his experience from the university, the last actually university assignment that I know of was when he exited from Ahmed Bell University Zaria as a professor of political science. Then he became director general of the Nigerian Institute of International Affairs in Lagos. From there, he catapulted to become the Minister of External Affairs or Foreign Affairs. And then from there, he catapulted actually into the UN system. And since then, he has been actually part of actually a global peace and security agenda, you know, even outside the UN system as an independent consultant and also as, a, as an elder statesman. So what do we need, you know, from a chief of staff as a gatekeeper to the presidency? What do we need from, 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 from such a person? Is it a qualification or is it competence or experience or exposure? And what is lacking in Professor Ibrahim Gambari if we're looking for any of these, you know, uh, elements? He has them all. Probably people might say, oh, age-wise, 75, maybe look for somebody in the 60s or in the mid-50s. You know, I can't contest that fact, but we shouldn't forget one point. The choice of a personal aid to Mr. President as the gatekeeper, as the American call it, you know, uh, to the presidency is a matter of personal choice. It's a matter of actually looking for a confidant. It's a matter of looking for somebody who is capable and who is competent beyond paper qualifications. And on the other hand, it is also purely about you know, uh, bureaucratic and political appointment combined in one. He's supposed to simply oversee the staff in the presidency, and then he's expected also to be the person to see the president first before any other person sees Mr. President. And he shadows him and he makes sure that his days and days and weeks, you know, are run, you know, uh, perfectly or in the best possible way that, that he can. That is what is expected of actually a chief of staff. So let, let's take a closer look at uh, who is uh, Professor Gambari. So there are a few, qual I mean, well, pointers at who he is and some of the things that tells us what exactly he has done over the past few years. An economist uh, who graduated from the London School of Economics, an administrator, uh, and a diplomat, a scholar, a former minister, a political scientist, an international civil servant. Those are some of the attributes of the new man who is going to be the chief of staff, uh, who is the chief of staff to President Muhammad Buhari. Let's take a look at him closer, on a closer level now. He's 75 years. He will be 76 in November, uh, born in 1944. Uh, he's from Kwara State. In, interestingly, he's 
a member of the Gambari royal family in Ilorin and he served as a foreign affairs minister under President Muhammad Buhari uh, when President, uh, he was uh, uh, a military head of state at a time uh, between 1983 and 1984. Perhaps what could be a background to our conversation tonight about the role of the chief of staff of a president? Let's take a look at it. Uh, uh, okay, M more stuff about... Um, Professor Gambari, uh, his educational background, of course, London School of Economics, uh, Columbia University and Ivy League, where he had his master's and PhD in political science and international relations. And these are some of his diplomatic experience and uh, his role outside of, uh, of the country as an international civil servant, you can see there. So let's take a look at uh, the office of the president of, uh, of the uh, of president's chief of staff. A lot of people had said the roles are majorly managerial and advisory history uh, in nature and look at it they said that it leads the state of the staff of the executive office of the president he advises the president on policy issues select and supervise key sta uh, state house uh, staff he controls access to the president's office manage communications and information flow it helps to coordinate presidential directives communications from the president's office with parliament executive branch agencies and external political groups to implement the president's agenda but this is where the major issue will come. Where does he go from here? The task before him to bridge the gap between cabinet members and the president. We've seen the style of President Muhammad Buhari. This is a very major one. He's also going to be helping to coordinate the president's office in the post abakiari era and also help President Buhari to manage the impact of oil price slump, which is a major one in terms of economy. He has experience as a, he's an economist by training, handling the COVID-19 pandemic and the after effect of the health emergency. That's going to be a very immediate and urgent uh, thing that you need to look into and helping the president and advise him on. Also managing President Buhari politically, uh, balancing between governance and politics, Buhari's foreign image also and diplomacy is part of what he needs to do. So this forms part of our conversation. And let me quickly go to Professor Gide of Fuadibe. Professor, uh, give us a sense of uh, uh, what you make of uh, uh, some People will think, for example, that Professor Gambari had worked in some of the difficult regimes in his own words. Yeah, I'm not sure I understood the question. Can you come again, please? Yeah, it is, there's been a lot of people who are for and who are against his appointment. Some people who have been critical about his role in past governments and some military administrations. Some uh, who have said, uh, question, uh, in fact, in his own words, that he has worked in difficult regimes. All right. Um, thank you very much. First of all is that uh, we are operating a democracy. We're a plural society it will be extremely difficult to expect that everyone will oppose your appointment or everyone will support your appointment. As um, this is one of the aids of the president, that the president has the prerogative of appointing. It does not even go through the National Assembly uh, confirmation. So it just depends on what the president himself is looking for. And then under the doctrine of collective response, this is not defending him, under the doctrine of collective responsibility, once you accept to serve in any regime, you defend that regime, especially if part of your responsibilities is to be defend the government. That's even if you have a different view. So you can be a critic of the government and uh, suddenly you become a part of the government. You don't cease to become a critic. You simply change your style of criticism, you be, your criticism now becomes in form of memo. So we wouldn't really, until we get to read his own memoir and know his own reposition in some of the issues he's alleged to have played a role in the Abacha regime and in the Buhari government. Because once you work for any government, part of the loyalty you owe to that government is to defend it as part of collective responsibility. So we wouldn't really hold that against him so much because uh, he has since then moved to the UN system. He stayed for so long, over 20 years working in the UN. 
He continues to get international assignments. So these, unless he's doing something right, you will not be that in so much in that demand. But as I keep saying, or as I said before, these were extremely structured environments. To work as chief of staff, which somebody described as your block, that is because you control access, you tackle, you, you deprive people from doing certain things. It's going to be a different ball game. And I say in this, he has the social capital, the name recognition, the network, but it's going to be a different assignment. We have to wait and see how things play out. Even those who are, who, some of the power centers that, you know, we are on the losing end under Abakiari, we'll also keep an eye on how they react. We also keep an eye on how Gambari himself deals with them. We know those centers of powers that we are complaining and uh, calling uh, uh, Abakiari Cabal or the, <laughs> the head of the Cabal. We we'll have to keep an eye on those centers of power, whether they are going to cooperate with him, whether Gambari himself is going to co-opt and share power with them, as happened in with the other in other regimes, the, the other regimes people talked about cabal. We have to see. We, you cannot, um, the test of the to wash in Kappa is in its eating. Uh, so um, I want us to look at uh, uh, some very critical part of this in, in the role of uh, uh, the, the, pres, uh, the task before Professor Gambari. The first one, uh, perhaps uh, Professor Laden, uh, coming into the conversation on this one, uh, bridging the gap between the cabinet members and the president. The president was very clear on how he wants to run his office and how he wants the chief of staff to operate, although this was the rule when the late Abakiari was in office. Uh, but let's look at this particular role. Uh, Professor Ladan, speak on this one, bridging the gap between cabinet members and the president. How crucial is that task before Professor Gambari? Uh, well, in the first instance, uh, I'm sure by now, and by virtue of his experience, exposure in the last 35, 40 years, at the national, regional, and global level, uh, Professor Gambari surely must be in the know that occupying the office of the chief of staff, you know, to the president, as we all know, uh, you know, in the last 20 years created actually in the Nigerian system, uh, you know, requires him to play two critical roles, uh, bureaucratic as well as political. And there is no problem, really, uh, with regards to uh, staff on ground that are bureaucratic you know, in nature, because you have to work with the permanent secretary, you know, cabinet office, you have to work with actually some aid that are largely actually, you know, are bureaucrats, but you also have to work with the office of the secretary of the government of the federation, you know, and at the same time, you know, linking actually, uh, you know, uh, the function of the chief of staff to the president you know, to what the president expects of a chief of staff, to be a gatekeeper, to do what? Uh, and I think this is actually the crux of the matter. First, we must understand that a chief of staff, who is to combine two roles, bureaucratic and political roles, in one person, is to be appointed, you know, to assist the president of the Federal Republic of Nigeria to discharge his functions. That is one. The second, that we expect Professor Ibrahim Gabri to be in the know by today that he's occupying that office, that Mr. President, you know, has to appoint, and as he also actually appointed him as of today, you know, at the pleasure of the president. You know, that is number two. And that he knows that he ceases to be the chief of staff when the president of the Republic of Nigeria, you know, ceases also to hold office as the president of Nigeria. So, you see, there are three elements to guide us, you know, to understand uh, where Professor Ibrahim Gambari needs to appreciate his critical role. Uh, and um, working with bureaucrats has never been a problem for him. Working with politicians has also never been a problem, actually, for Professor Gambari in the last 35, 40 years. Yeah, so, uh, I mean... And, uh, 
Yeah, that's very. That's going to be very critical, isn't it? Uh, bridging the gap uh, between uh, the cabinet members and the president. We've seen the controversy uh, the last time with the NSA releasing a memo about how the uh, the former chief of staff related on the issue of security. Let me allow Professor Gide of Adibe to come in. This is going to be a very critical one because it's caused a lot of controversy. React to it on 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 that on the, uh, some of the things that uh, Professor Laden has also said on this matter. On, the, on how he's going to mediate between the political office holders and the cabinet. Absolutely. Bridging the gap between the office of the president and the cabinet members. Yeah, that's uh, exactly why they use the term tackling and blocking. Um, in the American system, the chief of staff is responsible, uh, manages the entire the White House staff, that is essential, the people you call the Villa staff. Um, one of the things probably we'll be looking at in terms of how he's going, we're going to look at whether he introduces changes in terms of communication styles. That's one of the areas actually I'm, I'm expecting uh, from what we know of him, that there may be some imprinting of his own personal style in the way the house, the, the villa staff function. He also relates, going to relate very well, I think, with the political class. As I said, um, he has the social capital, he has the network, and if he continues to enjoy, or if he continues to enjoy the implicit support of the president, one thing that may work for him is that the president is believed to have this style of outsourcing governance to whoever he trusts implicitly. And you saw it when he worked with the Atunde Diabon, he saw it when he, with Abba Kieri. If that pattern is repeated, then the task becomes extremely onerous. He becomes therefore the de facto person, the de facto president. And that is where being able to manage that mediating role effectively becomes very crucial. But if, as some people have rumored, the, 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 the locus of power is shared, is no longer concentrated in the chief of staff, and it doesn't have to, as I said, this, it was only under Obasanjo in this current dispensation that we have seen so much concentration of power in that office. So if that trend from Abakir is repeated, then he has to then be able to call into play that his experience of having been a, a, a minister before. He has to call into experience his social, tap into his social capital and network. But then how well he does that will also depend on how the others resist. It is not always easy to okay. go out to the political class and say you manage them. There will be resistance. All right. Let, let's, how well let's, does he do uh, it? Yeah, Prof, let's go to uh, uh, the point two and three, which are the task before uh, the, the, the new chief of staff. Uh, for example, uh, in the post uh, Abakiari era, you know, a lot of people now will be looking for uh, alliances because uh, those who, are, who believe that there was a cabal, uh, what will be happening, the politics of that office. Uh, so, Professor Laden, uh, give us a sense of what you think could be happening. In, uh, in the task before Professor uh, Ibrahim Gambari in his office in the post Abakiari era? Uh, well, uh, in the first instance, I think we need to refer to political appointees uh, in, in any setting. Uh, we, th there is no government uh, in any political setting that will never have a cabal or that cabal will not create themselves you know, around any leader you know, political, actually leader for that matter, whether at the federal or state level. So I think the problem with the Office of the Chief of Staff, you know, uh, you know uh, pre gambari today, uh, has to do with the perceived abuse of the political role, you know, of that office or the occupant of that office that has brought the attraction, you know, for many to put their actually searchlight on the activities of the occupant of that office. 
uh, many a times we, 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 we wrongly actually, you know, uh, uh, judge people uh, with regards to their commitment, you know, uh, in service or with regards to their loyalty to the person they are serving. And especially when somebody is a personal appointee to, uh, to, to a president, you know, that person will have to demonstrate a greater sense of commitment and a greater sense of loyalty than any other bureaucrat around him in that particular, you know, villa or office. You have to. So, uh, but I think what is important for us, you know, to address the concern of those who believe that there has been an abuse of that particular office, you know, in the past, you know, not only with regards to the late Abakari, but even right from the time of, uh, you know, Basanjo, then uh, Jonathan, there have been abuses and people have complained. It depends on from which side, you know, of, of the divide are you looking at the issue of, uh, of, the, of the occupant of the Office of Chief of Staff. But my concern, you know, uh, is that for, for a way forward, is that we should really be much more interested in the work schedule of the Chief of Staff. How is it going to be crafted uh, to enable him actually assist the president in charging his, his functions to also coordinate the staff, you know, in the in the villa, right. and at the same time relate with other political actors without necessarily jeopardizing national interests. Okay, so let's take a breather. Uh, we'll take a second break on the program, but when we come back, there are critical national issues on our hands tonight, at which we'll be looking at, and the task before this man political scientists and economists, how will he be able to bring that to bear in helping the office of the president? That's going to be next on the program, everyone. Join us again. Thank you so much, everyone. Professor Laden and Professor Gideon Fuadibe in Abuja studio and on Skype tonight have been analyzing these issues for us. The new man at the M of Affairs in the office of the Chief of Staff to the President, Professor Ibrahim Gambari, and the task before him, we're analyzing and bringing to bear some of the things that needed to be done in the country. Let's get back to the conversation. Let me go to Professor Gideo Fuadibe. Prof, give us a sense of how important. Uh, I'll take two issues now. The issues of the economy, which Professor Ibrahim is uh, Ibrahim Gambari is not uh, alien to, and of course the present health emergency we're facing as a country. How much of a role uh, do you think it, it can play helping the president when he needs to make decisions? Um, thank you. I just want to quickly address one thing before answering that. Uh, his appointment, and because you were alluding to what you called abuses of, uh, or sorry, my Professor Ladan was alluding to what he called abuses of the political function of uh, the chief of staff in terms of uh, people calling, calling them cabal. Uh, Professor Gambari is not going to solve the problem of cabals in government. Uh, in political science, we have what we call the iron law of oligarchy, that any organization, no matter how democratic they may have started, Precisely because authorities have to be delegated, there will be competition by various centers of power to capture access or to exercise disproportionate influence. So a small clique will always become triumphant in that, which means that anytime you talk about government, you talk about struggle for state capture, you talk about cabal, everyone will be cabal. Sooner than later, he will also become part of the cabal. That's you will have to exercise disproportionate influence. The other thing I want to mention is that I think we should also be careful not to expect too much from him. The president has a team of economic advisors. He has a minister of uh, finance. He has people with task force on um, COVID-19 and all that. His job, as far as I can make it, is to advise. He looks at some of the positions that are being presented to the president and we'll be able probably to streamline them, uh, make it narrow down the options. And sometimes he doesn't need to do all these things alone. He has his own staff. He can use consultants to look at some of the proposals that are being sent to the president and then be able to help advise the president. I think also he's in a position, depending again on how much of confidence he gains of the president, he's in a position to tell the president the 
you know, the bitter truth, what we can call the bitter truth in a nice way. He's a diplomat. And, you know, we say a diplomat is somebody who tells you to go to hell and you'll be looking forward to when the journey will start. So that will, he will bring that to bear. He will be in a position to tell the president something he may, you know, may be uncomfortable. And as a diplomat, probably know how to put it in such a nice way that the president will not feel bad. But I think I want us to, you know, quickly disabuse our minds that the chief of staff will run the, 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 the government as a, in, you know, as, a, as, a, as a kind of a king, an emperor. No, he advises. It doesn't mean that being the, uh, uh, the chief of staff doesn't m m uh, make the roles of the other functionaries and aides of the president redundant. No, they also come with their proposals, and then a, a smart one will then be in a position to streamline what he sends to the president because there's just so much a president can read at a time. And then he will be able to break these things down, summarize them for the, to the president, and present them in a way that it simplifies the, you know, the opportunity for the president to take options. He's not the one to, to simply run the economy. You know, there are economic advisors, there's Minister of uh, Finance, a whole lot, a bunch of aides. He's not going to displace them, but he's going to be in a position to look at their proposals and streamline them for the president to take a decision. So, uh, Professor Laden, uh, uh, come on, jump on this, uh, the issue of uh, uh, the m management of uh, uh, or advising the president on uh, this issue. Because a lot of people say, look, if you take to the president, for example, a hundred page of proposal, the chief of staff has the right to compress it in a summary for the president. So, a lot of people believe uh, the opinion that the chief of staff allowed the president to see what he wants the president to see. So in that sense, a lot of people believe that his role is very critical. In the issue of the impact of the oil price on our economy, a lot of things will come to the president's table. He will have to manage uh, the conversation before he gets to the president. And the issue of the health emergency, uh, Professor Gideo Fadibe has uh, said, uh, given his thought on this. What are your thoughts on that, on those two points? Yeah, I think uh, in the first instance, uh, we shouldn't actually forget the fact that on the economy, uh, there is actually a very critical role, uh, complementary to that of the chief of staff, direct to the president, uh, to also be uh, taken into consideration. And that is the critical role of the vice president, you know, uh, of the Federal Republic of Nigeria. Uh, the vice president heads the economic team. Currently, he's even chairing you know, the Economic Sustainability Plan Committee, you know, to boost the economy post-COVID-19. So uh, the chief of staff, you know, has his own limitations in terms of what he can actually, you know, add, reduce, or subtract, or hide, or simply package for the president to see. We shouldn't forget, actually, the fact also that the vice president has a direct access, direct access to the president on economic matters and so also on matter relating to uh, public emergency, which includes health emergency. So I think, you know, everything boils down to what I strongly believe in the work schedule of the chief of staff and his commitment and sincerity of purpose to serve the nation, you know, above, above any other interest. But at the same time, he's a personal aide and confidant to the president you know, to get, keep, you know, the presidency. So I believe strongly that uh, Professor Ibrahim Gambari actually is first sensitive enough and is also very mature enough and is also very responsible enough. And he knows, he knows quite very well, you know, uh, all the talks about the former occupant, you know, of, of the office that he's currently occupying. And I, I'm, I'm very sure that he's going to provide uh, a sense of balance you know, uh, not to satisfy the, uh, you know, uh, you know, the pessimists or people who do not like him in office. There will always be people who will never like you in office, especially when you're occupying uh, such actually a, a very sensitive and critical, you know, uh, you know, uh, post that people believe that you can do and undo. So I think we should rather be concerned about, you know, uh, Professor Brian Gambari at this stage having you know, at the back of his mind, that he's the personal confidant to the president on such matters to get to keep the presidency, but his critical actually role 
will be to place national interest first above any other consideration. All right. And so, I think uh, if yeah, so let, let, let's, I think it's, it's a good point for us to conclude on our last point tonight. Managing Buhari politically, balance between governance and politics. And of course, uh, this is uh, uh, Professor Gambari's forte, foreign image and diplomacy. But uh, Professor Gideon Fadibe, we have just about 40 seconds to the end of the program. Give us your thoughts on how this can play out, the balance of, uh, uh, of, of, of the force of governance and politics. Well, I, if, I were, if I were him, I would like look at start with the areas where I know the government is very well criticized. The issue of uh, his alleged sloppiness of appointments, the issue of the way the, some of the aides talk to the public and seem to talk down to Nigerians are combative and combustious. Uh, we would like to see some low-hanging fruits that he will pluck immediately. We want to see immediate change. If in the next two weeks we see a change in the style of communication, especially from the media aides to the public, then we'll say uh, a new sheriff is in, in, in town. We don't need a new sheriff. We need what we call soft power. And he, he's a diplomat. He knows that. We need to reach out to Nigerians and talk to them in a nice way. We're not at war and you don't believe people who oppose to the uh, president's uh, philosophy and, and politics are necessarily haters, as they call them, are uh, necessarily having an agenda and all this. We need civilized conversations. He's worked most of his life, I mean, in the last 20, 30 years in highly, you know, UN systems across the world. That kind of civilized behavior is what we expect to be one of the low-hanging fruits I expect him to pluck. Interesting uh, conversations there. Uh, Professor G.D. Ofuadibe, political science lecturer at the University, the Nassau State University. Thank you so much for talking to us tonight. And of course, Professor Mohamed Ladan uh, is the Director General at the, the Center for uh, Legal and Advanced Studies. Thank you indeed for your time and your thoughts tonight on the program. Well, that's our show Thank for you. tonight, everyone. <laughs> Many thanks for watching. I'm Sean Kimale. Bye-bye.